Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are going to be discussing the topic of human influences on the ecosystem. Deforestation. Deforestation is the removal of a forest of trees from an area of land that is then converted for non-forest uses such as farms or housing. The following are potential undesirable effects of deforestation. Species extinction through habitat loss. The destruction of habitats and or food sources for animals can result in their extinction. It should also be noted that the destruction of forest habitats also reduces the diversity of plants and animals, thus disrupting several food chains. Soil erosion. Fewer trees and flora in general mean that there are fewer roots to hold the soil. This means that each time it rains, a thin layer of soil is washed away. This causes soil erosion and leaching of minerals. Leaching is when a soluble chemical or mineral is washed away from the soil by the rainwater. The eventual result is that the land becomes a desert. Flooding. Soil erosion is washed into rivers, causing them to fill up or become blocked. This causes flooding. The loss of flora also means that there are no plant roots to take up rainwater, which means more rainwater washes into nearby streams and rivers. This makes flooding easier. Carbon dioxide buildup. Forests have high rates of photosynthesis, which means a great deal of carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere by the flora in forests. Therefore, deforestation means that a lot less carbon dioxide will be removed from the atmosphere, causing an increase in the CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Fertilisers Fertiliser is any material of natural or synthetic origin that is applied to soil or plant tissues to provide them with nutrients essential to growth. Farmers use fertilisers to increase crop yield, but using in excess can be dangerous. A high concentration of fertilisers around plant roots can cause the roots to lose water by osmosis, resulting in the wilting and death of plants. Another effect is eutrophication. Eutrophication is when a body of water becomes infected by the nutrients in the fertiliser, causing unwanted growth of algae. Fertilisers are water-soluble, so are easier leached out of the soil and washed into rivers and lakes. Algal bloom occurs. The algae absorb the fertilisers and grow rapidly. This means that the algae will blanket the surface of the lake, blocking sunlight from the plant life below. Algae and plants below the surface die as a result. Bacteria decompose the dead algae and plants, using up the oxygen in the water for respiration, causing the animals to die as well. Pollution Pollution is the presence or introduction into the environment of a substance or thing that has a harmful or poisonous effect. Undesirable effects of pollution include water pollution by sewage and chemical waste, and air pollution by greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane, which contribute to global warming. Water pollution Chemical wastes such as phosphates can cause eutrophication, which, as we have learned, can be disastrous. Some chemical wastes can be toxic to certain species of plants or animals, or two inert chemicals in combination could react to form a toxic compound, or, even if the chemicals weren't dumped into water bodies, they could still be leached into water bodies. Even if a chemical only harms one species, this could disrupt a food chain and decrease the species' diversity in that ecosystem. If such chemical wastes enter the drinking water supply, that could be extremely harmful. Sewage, which consists of urine and faeces, contains high levels of nutrients such as phosphates, organic matter and bacteria. Phosphates act as fertilisers for algae, thus resulting in algal bloom. 
Sewage also contains organic matter which bacteria break down by aerobic respiration, thus allowing them to multiply and deoxygenate the water. Sewage may also contain disease-causing bacteria, which could get into drinking water supplies, causing serious maladies such as cholera or typhoid. Air pollution. Here is a diagram of the greenhouse effect. Some sunlight that hits the earth is reflected. Some becomes heat. CO2 and other gases in the atmosphere trap heat, keeping the earth warm. CO2 and methane, CH4, are both greenhouse gases. They are called greenhouse gases because they trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere in the same way that a greenhouse traps heat. CO2 is produced in the combustion of fossil fuels, and methane is produced in the decay of organic matter and as a waste gas from digestive processes in cattle. As the concentration of these gases in the atmosphere rise, more heat is trapped, making the atmosphere warmer. This is called the enhanced greenhouse effect. It causes global warming, the rise of the Earth's average temperature. Global warming can result in the melting of ice caps, which can destroy ecosystems near the poles. The rise of sea levels, which causes flooding in coastal regions. Deadly heat strokes, changing weather conditions due to flooding and reduced rainfall and the extinction of some species that cannot survive at higher temperatures. Acid rain. Acidic rain is rainfall that has been made significantly acidic in its content by the pollution within the atmosphere. Causes and effects. When fossil fuels with impurities such as sulphur or nitrogen are combusted, sulphur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen are released into the air. Nitrogen oxides are also a pollutant gas that may be released in car exhaust fumes. Another way that nitrogen oxides are made is during lightning. About 78% of the Earth's atmosphere consists of nitrogen gas and 21% is oxygen. Nitrogen gas, N2, is extremely unreactive. However, under extreme conditions, it may react. So, when lightning strikes and the surrounding air is heated to a very high temperature and severely ionised, nitrogen reacts with oxygen to form nitrous oxides. Nitrous oxides and sulphur dioxide can travel very high into the atmosphere and be carried long distances by the wind. When they mix and react with the water in the atmosphere, they form acidic pollutants such as sulfuric acid, H2SO4, sulfurous acid, H2SO3, nitric acid, HNO3, and nitrous acid, HNO2. These acids dissolve in water and fall back to earth when it rains, causing acid rain. Acid rain has a number of effects, including damage to leaves, killing plants, acidification of lakes, killing animals, this is a major effect, the release of aluminium from the soil into lakes is toxic to fish, this is also a major effect, increased risk of asthma attacks and bronchitis in humans, and corrosion of stonework on buildings, especially structures made of marble. Marble contains calcium carbonate, which readily reacts with acids. There are several measures that could be taken to reduce the incidence of acid rain. Changing power stations from coal and oil to renewable energy sources will reduce the emissions of several waste gases, including sulphur dioxide. Using scrubbers in power station chimneys removes sulphur dioxide from the exhaust gases. A scrubber is the informal name for flue gas desulfurization, FGD. Using catalytic converters in car exhausts ensures that oxides of nitrogen are converted to harmless nitrogen gas. Another possible route is switching to electronic cars instead of traditional fuel-powered cars. Conservation of species, 
their habitats and natural resources. Why we should conserve species and their habitats. Ethical reasons. It is our responsibility to look after the earth and all life on it. Many species are in danger of extinction due to habitat destruction, the introduction of alien species, they are called alien species as they are foreign to that ecosystem, international trade, pollution, hunting, poaching, etc. Loss of species also means that genes are lost. These may be important in the future for genetic engineering. The presence of rare species and or beautiful habitats could be an important source of money for poor communities through tourism. Many plants have medicinal value. The species may play an important role in the food chain, so its endangerment could lead to the endangerment of several others.